also we're going to research it. We're going to make sure we're going to implement the best plan possible for this community as it relates to public safety. And we have a big job going forth with the zoning. Zoning is going to be a great big part of this. And thank you, Megan, for uh, with some terminology, uh, some new terminology in this master plan, uh, flexible zoning and different things that we've never heard before, uh, giving us a better understanding of what that means and how we're going to implement those type of things in our community to make this plan really work. I, I thank you guys. I thank you uh, all for putting uh, all the hard work in your staff. I know they're sitting in the second row, but those guys back there really, really worked hard, and I gave a few of them a hard time every now and again, but I appreciate the hard work that you guys have put in. Thank you. Councilman Wayhill. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, too, want to echo uh, the congratulation, congratulatory comments of my colleagues uh, towards the volunteers and staff. Um, the staff, of course, I think is led by the mayor, um, with Megan um, as his appointee. Um, working with her folks and the planning side of things and then of course the volunteers uh, Primarily the folks on the steering committee and then we have people on the planning commission I want to point out a couple of people that are from the seventh ward and um, Express my gratitude toward them Judy Hovey was here. I don't know if she still is she was on the the steering committee and, and she was an appointment that I recommended I think to the mayor or to the to the co-chairs of that that body and um, she's been an active member, and, and I know that because she updates me frequently via email and over lunch at the Applewood Cafe at Mott College, um, bringing me up to speed on uh, different aspects of your deliberations. I also want to thank my friend Denise Smith-Allen, who's the seventh ward representative on the Planning Commission. Four years ago at this time, Denise and I were on opposite sides of the ballot uh, running for city council, but we have both served our city. Uh, in different capacities the past four years, so I want to thank you, Denise, for, for your public service. Um, and of course, Jim Richardson, who was the co-chair of the steering committee, has been a longtime resident of the 7th Ward, and I'm uh, pleased that he was able to provide leadership to this effort. Um, believe it or not, I haven't been as active as I would have liked in the meetings related to the development of the master plan, but I have been giving it a great deal of thought. And I will be voting in the affirmative tonight, but I want to sort of lay out what I think are the positive pieces of this and, and some of my, um, my concerns going forward. Um, I guess I would break this into two pieces, sort of Dale Wayhill prior to 2009 and Dale Wayhill since he was elected to the city council. Um, in, in the year 2000, I became the CEO of a nonprofit organization in this community called Resource Genesee. And I uh, led that organization for 11 years, from 2000 to 2011. Resource Genesee had countless interactions in the community. We were involved with many initiatives, many networks, many individual nonprofits, grassroots organization, funding institutions from Ruth Mott to CS Mott to the Community Foundation and others. And that work gave me a great deal of optimism about this community because I was able to work with volunteers and people who were committed to making this community a better place each and every day and I did that for 11 long years and it was very worthwhile and when I ran for mayor in 2007 I put forward a pretty extensive plan not not 300 pages long but several pages long that talked about um, coming together building coalitions leveraging resources working with different stakeholders and really trying to work on some issues that were you know, range from, from very basic and fundamental city services to things that were tremendously complex, like addressing the dropout problem in Flint Community Schools, which is a, an emergency. And so I ran on that for mayor. I uh, wasn't successful in that election, but a couple of years later ran for city council, was fortunate enough to, to be elected, and have been serving on this body for four years. This is my last meeting this evening, so my last vote will be on the, uh, the master plan. Um, so my, my views on this issue are bifurcated, pre-2009 and post-2009. My concern now is not whether this is a perfect plan, because there is no perfect plan. Um, the Constitution of the United States is imperfect, and this is an imperfect plan. We, we know that by definition. My concern is about the city government's capacity to implement, to coordinate the implementation, and to be of support um, to the implementation of this master plan. And I say that through the lens of someone 
who has literally taken 2,000 phone calls from constituents in the past four years. I keep a spreadsheet every time somebody calls me. I put their name on this, the, the line and I put what their issue is and how I'm trying to help them. Many times I get great service from city government. People call me back, department heads are responsive, we're able to fill a pothole or knock down a dead tree or get a park mode. Um, I would say about 50% of the time I don't get a call back, uh, at least immediately. And literally I have to work at times for months or weeks on filling a pothole, getting a lawn cut on a vacant house. Um, some of the basic fundamental services that this city should be providing um, are not being fulfilled today because we do not have the capacity, we do not have the money, the personnel, the systems in place to even deliver what I consider to be basic fundamental city services. If someone calls me tomorrow and says, um, the park is not mowed across from Mott College, I will have to make a call about that and frequently I don't get a call back and I will not get a call back perhaps for days. Um, I tried to get a simple resolution on our agenda tonight in support of Mott Community College's bonding authority uh, which is up for renewal in next Tuesday's election. I can assure you that there's a lot about education in here and Mott is central to that because most of the college students in this city go to Mott Community College. And if we can't get a simple uh, resolution on our agenda for us to express our support and to encourage our fellow citizens in the city of Flint and beyond to vote for that, if I can't work for three or four weeks to try to get that on our agenda and I find out at five o'clock today that it's not on the agenda, that's a simple thing. And, and a big part of this plan is addressing complex, complicated, difficult human conditions. Poverty, dropout rates in Flint schools, prisoner reentry, getting women to nurse feed or breastfeed their babies. Is that still in here, Megan? Okay, it's still in here. That's a good issue and we need to address that, but that is a, a tremendously complicated thing when compared with knocking down a dead tree, filling a pothole, getting a crack filled in a sidewalk. So I don't want to belabor the point about our challenges, but I want all of us to recognize that the city government at the moment is not well positioned to help implement this plan. And I'm gonna vote for the plan. I'm, I'm hopeful that I can work on elements of this plan, things, things that I absolutely have my passion for. I will serve on committees and I will help you raise money. I'll do all that I can for those aspects um, where I feel that I can direct some of my own personal time. But please know, and I, I don't think the mayor, um, I, I don't think the mayor thinks that we have more capacity than we do because he and I had some exchanges last week and I just believe that we need to crawl before we walk and walk before we run on this thing. So with that, um, congratulations to the folks that were involved and to the community. Uh, I know that people put their heart and souls into this and a lot of passion into it and there's nothing in this plan that my experience in Flint doesn't tell me is needed and required. Uh, it's just a matter of, of um, doing it smartly and acquiring the capacity to do it over the, the coming years. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Wayhill. <clears throat> I can't tell Megan how many times I've told her how much I appreciate the job that she's done and my planning commissioner Elizabeth Jordan, how much she's reached out, and you've all received a lot of thanks from every one of us up here. But let's not overlook the over 5,000 people that participated in this plan. Um, they, they put a lot of time, a lot of effort. They really looked at some of the issues. They raised issues. They, they went to meetings. They come back to meetings. You, you guys did a great job at looking at those concerns and addressing those concerns. So, um, you know, now's the time to vote on this plan because I think it's a blueprint, something for us to start to work on. Um, I agree with Councilman Wayhill. Our resources are limited. Our challenges are great, uh, but that's why we sat here um, because we like challenges and we like to see change. And this master plan is the blueprint for us to start to make that change. So with that, roll, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Ms. Papla? Yes. 
Mr. Melden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Lawler? Yes, for approval. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroon? Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no. Thank you very much. Okay, that's the only resolution that's on the agenda for us to act on tonight. There are two ordinances, 130343.2 and, like. and 130344.4. There's been a request to postponed. have these postponed. Uh, so moved. It's been moved and supported. Discussion on the postponement? Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Lawler? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroom? Yes. Ms. Popla? Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no to postpone the two medical marijuana ordinances. Okay. Now's the time for council members to um, respond. If any council member wants to respond, I'm going to start with Ward 1. Anything? No. Claudia? No. Jackie? <laughs> Any comments? Yes, I do have a comment. My friend, I want to commend. Our friend. I want to Our commend. Our friend. Our friend. <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> well, I am. I want to commend. Claudia stuck and she stayed. And she cares about her city. And she worked hard the few moments that she was here. And Claudia is not done. Claudia Kroon was working from that back corner until she got here. <clears throat> and I know that Claudia is still going to work from that back corner. And I think. God for her being in this seat because I truly know that Claudia Kroon loved her city and she has worked hard and it's been a privilege to say this is my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Um, just Claudia, just, wait. Did you I, want to say I, something, I, Claudia? I'm emotional not because I'm leaving, because I'm not going to stop working. I'm emotional because of the good things that have happened since I've been here. I know there's some controversy about the Karagandi Water Project, but we're gonna we're gonna work that out. And this master plan is just awesome. I mean, we're living under a plan that was enacted, wow. what, 60 years ago. So uh, I am very, very excited. And Megan and Matthew, it's a blessing getting to know you too, especially. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Councilman Nolden? Um, I just wanted to um, make a public announcement that um, this Thursday from 5.30 to 7 at Burston Field House, we'll be having our fifth annual um, candy giveaway. Um, we're going to have a couple of bounce houses and some other things there for the kids. So if you have kids, come down to Burston Field House from 530 to 7. Um, I have plenty of security. Um, it's going to be a fun activity. and I